I'm Ken Blase, and I want to welcome you to our show about the restoration of trolleys. Today, we're going to take a look at some trolleys that are in need of restoration, other cars that have already been restored, and generally, we'll get an idea of what goes into this process of restoring old trolley cars. I'm at the California Railway Museum in Rio Vista. Since 1960, various types of trolley cars that once ran in California cities have been brought to this museum and have been carefully restored. This is an operating museum, and on weekends, visitors are welcome to come here and take a step back in time, see what it's actually like to ride these cars that once were traveling over city streets throughout California. What do you say? Let's hop aboard and take a ride. While we're on our ride around Rio Vista's museum grounds, I'd like to review a little about our trolley project in San Jose. The trolleys first clattered down the streets of San Jose nearly a hundred years ago, amidst horse-drawn wagons and horseless carriages. They were the city's most efficient and dependable mode of transportation. San Joseans counted on the crimson and gold trolleys to get them to school, to work, almost everywhere. During their heyday, the San Jose Railroad and Peninsula Railway operated some 126 miles of track. Eventually, private cars and gas-powered buses brought about the railroad's demise. In April 1938, the last cars of the San Jose Railroad were taken out of service. Some were sent to other cities, others were literally put out to pasture, most were eventually destroyed. A few of these trolleys, however, have been located. Although in need of major restoration, well travel the streets of San Jose once again. The sole objective of the San Jose Trolley Corporation, a nonprofit organization, is to restore and place back into daily service in downtown San Jose a few of the trolley cars that once crisscrossed the cities of the South Bay. It was a terrific ride. We can look forward to having cars like this in San Jose in several years. Our conductor today is Bruce Stevens, and uh, Bruce, I understand that you were instrumental in uh, locating the cars that are going to be restored in San Jose. Why were they so hard to spot? Uh, they were back in a lot. They were originally put on a lot. It had been a junkyard early on, mm -hmm. and then they were converted to housing. Then a house was built in front, and trees had grown up around them and everything, and then they had numerous coats of paint. Uh, 124 had a number of coats of paint, and that tended to protect the woodwork and everything. It's made it hard on us, of course, to get all of that paint off for seven or eight coats in some areas. But what we found underneath was well worth it. Beautiful mahogany and in woods that you can't even buy nowadays, let alone uh, hope to ever see again. What about the hardware, the brass uh, in the original cars? Was that still intact? Some of that. We found some of the door plates and some of the ironwork and some of the steps. Uh, we've been really fortunate. 124 was in much better shape than we thought, and 73 is, uh, is basically a chainsaw job that we're still going to restore. What does it mean, chainsaw job? A uh, chainsaw job in museum language is basically a car that you hope to save some pieces off of or learn a little bit about how the cars were put together but don't really ever expect to put back together because of the deterioration of the car. You literally take a chainsaw to those cars and cut them up. Basically. Yeah. But in this case? No, we <laughs> no. can't do that. We don't have enough of these cars. That's why we're asking people if there's any more. Yeah. You think there are more cars in the area? I, I, a lot of the cars. The cars like this one here. This one here was a sewing shed, I believe in Campbell. A lot of the cars were used as purely as sheds. The farmers took them and stuck them in their backyards and used them as sheds and buildings and chicken coops. These were used originally. One of them in 73 was a storage building at first, and then later on they both became housing with a garage between. 
uh, the 30s were hard times for everybody, along with the streetcar system, and they continued to serve the people of the community for a long time as buildings and stuff. Uh, and we're hoping there are people that have these cars or Bernie's or something in their backyards or remember seeing one will tell us where they're at. Bruce, after you got the cars uh, freed from the old construction there, how did you get them off the site and down to the museum grounds? Well, we were extremely lucky in that Peninsula Crane and Rigging uh, volunteered to pay for the whole move, basically, with the help of the operating engineers. And uh, they came in and very expertly rigged up the cars and literally lifted them out of that very tight location and drove them out. I mean, at one point, I don't think we had more than an inch between the car and the house. And we put them on large 40-foot flatbed trucks, moved them to the museum, and then set them down behind the museum one, to let people see that they actually existed, because that's just when we were getting people to put money into this program, and to uh, start work on the uh, trolley mart. So they sat behind the museum for several months, I take it? Yes, over a year almost. And then the next step? The next step was moving them into the barn. Here we are in the trolley barn in San Jose, and I'm on one of the three cars that's slated for restoration. This car and the others are very much like those that uh, you saw in Rio Vista before the restoration process got underway there. Mignon Gibson is with us this morning, and she's the director of the San Jose Historical Museum. And Mignon, I'm wondering if you could tell us something about these cars. I'd like to, Ken. Two of the cars actually ran in San Jose, cars number 124 and 73. 124 is in the better condition of the two, so it will be restored first. Our other car, number 35, the one that we're in, is a car from the line that ran in Sacramento. Charles Smallwood, well-known expert and authority on the San Jose trolley system, donated this car to the trolley corporation for a dollar a year for 99 years. It is the only car that has trucks right now, and it gives a good idea of what the cars look like on the track. Mignon, I understand cars 124 and 73 were actually being lived in when you uh, discovered them. That's right, Ken. While they didn't have all the comforts of home, they did provide shelter. Visitors can come out to the San Jose Historical Museum here in Kelly Park to see the cars being restored. Thanks, Mignon. As Bruce told us earlier, after the cars were moved to the museum ground, that's what they needed, shelter. The solution was to build a trolley barn so the cars could be moved out of the elements and so there'd be a place for the restoration work to actually get underway. Pierre Protus of Protus Associates offered his services as an architect for the barn. The barn was designed with two things in mind. First, aesthetically, to design a structure which would be compatible to the historic surroundings we have here at the museum. Second, functionally, to design a building which would house the restoration of three trolley cars. Let's go inside. Functionally, we needed a building with a good working space for volunteers. And as you can see, the clear story openings give light and openness to the central area of the barn. The barn was designed to take advantage of this natural lighting. But the scale is large. And that scale is determined by the size and number of the trolleys and the heights needed for clearance. In order to preserve the California barn design and, and create a compatible scale to the surrounding area, we needed to bring down the roof area and bring it in scale so that we used the porch area and the viewing area to bring in these lower scale elements. Now, all the volunteers on this job were just terrific to work with. But I feel I must mention a couple of names because they have some things here that they did personally. The first person is Virgil Maxwell. He was the foreman for the construction. And he designed and built and carved on his own time that beautiful trolley barn sign that you see outside. Also, that intriguing welded railroad spike door handle that we used to come in. Another person is the fellow who designed the weather vane, and that is Tony Darpino. That weather vane will be placed on the roof soon. And I'm really pleased to hear from those that actually work here that we designed it right. The place works, the spaces are good, and people are happy to work here. 
The laying of the track and driving of spikes was another step in getting ready for the trolleys. Southern Pacific donated the ties and rails for the track, and volunteers spent several weekends installing it. As you see, the track is dated 1906 and is made of Carnegie steel. Once again, the trolleys were moved by Peninsula Crane and Rigging, this time into the newly completed trolley barn ready for restoration. The San Jose Trolley Barn was dedicated in March of 1984. Careful planning made this barn not only a great addition to the San Jose Historical Museum grounds, but it made it a great place for the restoration of these old cars like 73, which were brought into this barn on its completion. The next step was to find volunteers to do the actual work of restoring these cars. For that, uh, Herb Schrader is our volunteer coordinator, and I see that Herb's on the telephone now and perhaps talking to a new volunteer, so why don't we eavesdrop? Oh, yes. Are you interested in volunteering? Well, we have a number of jobs to do here, uh, but they mostly consist of painting, scraping, stripping, sanding, and some carpenter work. Do you have any particular specialty? You would be happy to come and strip some paint? Well, that's marvelous. When, when would you like to come in? We're open every day, Thursday through Monday. And any time that you'd like to come in, we'd appreciate it very much. Saturday at 10. Oh, that's marvelous. Well, thank you very much for calling me, Terry. Bye. That's it. Perfect. There are dozens of volunteers out here today at the trolley barn, and pardon me, Herb, oh, yeah. how many volunteers do you have involved in this project overall? Well, we have 125 volunteers. That is names of 125, but we could use a lot more volunteers. I could use 500, actually. Do 125 show up regularly? <laughs> no, they don't. What keeps the people coming back, the ones who do return? Well, the, the regulars, as I call them, come here because they like to come here. They have a lot of fun doing this. They have good company. And, and they, some of them have a special project that they'd like to see completed. And I notice a lot of them wear pretty flashy t-shirts. Could I buy one of those? I'm sorry, Ken, those are not for sale. Uh -oh. uh, in order to get a t-shirt, uh, uh, a volunteer must put in at least 50 hours. And you have hundreds of t-shirts? Yes, we'll have thousands <laughs> as necessary. <laughs> if I work long enough, I might earn two t-shirts, I hope. I'd love to see you do it, Ken. That'd be great. What kind of special skills do you look for in volunteers? Well, we're looking for drafts persons, carpenters, mechanics, plumbers, welders, and some uh, persons that have a specialty for fine painting. Herb, I know you've got a lot of work to do, and I uh, do appreciate the time you've taken with us today. And I'll let you get back to lining up your volunteers, and uh, we'll talk to Fred Bennett and some of the other people in the barn. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to do some uh, paint stripping with paint remover. Okay, on the inside panels? Yes, on the inside panels. Okay. Well, Fred, I see you're keeping the volunteers busy today. What kind of jobs are you doing here? Today we're going to do paint stripping, sanding of wood, and the burning paint off wood and carpentry work. What's involved in sanding on these cars? In the sanding, we use coarse paper to sand the wood down, the rough stuff off the wood, and then finer paper to make it uh, smooth for the, uh, to take the paint. And what's involved in the wood burning process? Wood burning, we use a heat gun to burn the paint off wood where it's not going to be varnished. I noticed the interior of this car already appears to be restored. What was the process? What did this look like before you started? This is one of the parts we stripped with the paint remover, and we sanded it and gave it a coat of varnish. A lot of paint on this? Oh, yes. There's about seven coats of paint on that. In addition to the sanding and the paint burning, uh, and I know you have carpentry work going on. I've heard some hammering earlier. Yes, today we're uh, uh, rebuilding the end of the car. The carpenters are fitting new pieces of wood up there. Well, Fred, this is interesting. I know you have uh, volunteers to work with, and I think I'm going to walk over and see what's happening elsewhere around the car barn today. Thanks. There are dozens of volunteers and dozens of interesting restoration processes going on here, and 
Uh, Bill, I see you've been working on one process. What is, uh, what is this for and what is it called? Well, this is a window out of uh, 124, which is out of the Clara Story or monitor top of the, of the car, which is the, is the ventilating system for the car in the lieu of air conditioning. And it contains a beautiful piece of, of blue chip glass, as you can blue see. Chip, blue like chip, like in glue to paste with. Well, that's right. But okay. this is... Why does it get that name, glue chip? Well, he gets the name because the glass is actually made to look like this by applying glue to the surface of the glass. Is that the process that's going on here now in the no, restoration? No, the process that's going on right now is uh, the Jan and Alicia are stripping the windows uh, down to get all of the original finish off as well as much other finish that was put onto them over the years by people who lived in this particular car. Scott, bring over, let's uh, show what the, the ladies are are, are beginning with here. And uh, this is give you an idea of the, of the task set forth to uh, get to where we are right now. It's in pretty bad condition. It's pretty bad shape, but you can see. So what's the process now, starting with this piece of glass? What will he do to get it back up mm -hmm. to the condition of where we are? Well, mainly it's going to be many, many coats of uh, a paint remover, as well as assisted by uh, steel wool and a lot of water to Which is uh, this process. To this process to get the, the glass uh, and the wood clean again. I know, noticed too, uh, to point out the authenticity of this restoration, that uh, one of the volunteers here was actually a few minutes ago repolishing the brass screws that came out of the original windows and replacing the original brass screws. That's something I did forget to say, that's and that's it. also a very, very important part of it, and making it look right is even getting down to have the spit and polish of the brass. That's a labor of love. Yes, it is. Thanks a lot, Bill. Thank you. Right, so we have some workers here. Uh, Merle, uh, when you're redoing, when you're rebuilding this, uh, where did you come up with the patterns? How do you find a pattern for it? This Merle? piece here was made from templates that I uh, made from the other end of the car. This end was all missing, so I had to, to use templates from uh, the one end, and uh, I used that as a pattern to saw out this part. And uh, uh, then we have four posts here between the roof and, and the floor. To close the windows. And close the front windows, yes. And what about the floor here? I see this has been reconstructed. Yes, as well. this is all new piece, brand new oak wood. Uh, Fred had some drawings on this. He made some drawings from the old rotten pieces, which uh -huh. were all full of dry rot and termites and so on. How many hours have you put in on the project so far? How often do you come down? Uh, Every week? I come down about five days a week, yes. Five days mm -hmm. a week. Well, thanks a lot, Merle. I'll let you get back to work so you can get this car ready by 1986. Fine, fine. <laughs> okay, thanks okay. very much. Nice meeting you, Ken. Nice meeting you. Back to work. <clears throat> okay, back to work. We're back on car 35, and it looks like County Supervisor Rod Dearden is anxious to get on with the inaugural ride, Rod. Ken, I really nice am. I'm ready. Rod well, is the president of the San Jose Trolley Corporation, and this seat probably looks more uncomfortable than it really is. Ken, it's, uh, it's fairly comfortable, but it is wooden and not comfortable for a long ride. The, the seats that are wooden are going to be in the open part of the car because they're more durable, but the uh, internal seats will be out of rattan and leather as they originally were back in the early 1900s. Are these the original seats that are being restored? Yes, they are, uh, we're, except that we're going to have to recast many of the base out of the molten metal uh, that, they, that they originally were made of. Uh, they're being rebuilt back in the wood shop now, and they'll be ready when the car is ready. Rod, I noticed when I came in, presuming the car is uh, traveling the direction you were facing, uh, you'd be in good shape. But going home, would you be riding backwards on this trolley? No. What would happen at the end of the line is that the motorman would move from that end down to this end, and as he went on through to set up his controls at the other end, he would grab the seat and move it so that it's ready to go the other direction. Do that on every seat and reload the passengers. That's right. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, there are a lot of folks around Santa Clara County who have fond memories of uh, 1938 when these trolleys were online and came offline. And uh, I imagine they're looking forward to uh, seeing them on the streets again. And we're going to talk to some of those people. I have to go back to horse cars as a means of transportation in San Jose since my grandfather, Conrad, was uh, came to this country, and he was on the volunteer fire department in along about 1855. My father used to ride the horse cars to go to work in the out to Willow Glen to work in the 
fruit or to get from one place to another. My introduction to the, this means of transportation was the old Alam Rock Railroad, which ran from downtown, went out Santa Clara Street to 17th. And on the way out, it was kind of an interesting tour because there was an ostrich farm. And that was a, one of the side things that sightseeing uh, items. Went on a little further, it was Luna Park, which is an amusement park, but it's long since gone. Then the, the uh, route continued on out Berryessa Road to Elm Rock. And then when you got to Elm Rock, of course, you either went swimming or you uh, uh, tasted some of the water. They had soda water, sulfur water, that sort of thing. Uh, the other thing I remember very distinctly, of course, was taking the Peninsula Rapid Transit from San Jose to Palo Alto, where I would go to the football games. The uh, route went out Stevens Creek, out through Los Alas, went along El Camino to uh, the stadium where you could get off, go watch a track meet or football game, whatever was there, and then turn around and come back. And I think the round trip was maybe 25 cents. Then when I went to Stanford, of course, there was still a cable, there was still a streetcar running from the campus into town and back, so we used to ride that. But uh, those cars were quite small, they were pretty bumpy, and you you'd almost need a seasick pill if, <laughs> at times because they were so bumpy. But uh, those are the, my most distinct recollections of, of the streetcars because I think they were discontinued about 1930. The Metro A Trust Fund came into being approximately 15 years ago when the downtown merchants and the downtown property owners sold the credit bureau to an outside credit reporting company. The funds that were received from the sale were placed into a trust fund uh, with, <clears throat> with the stipulation that the money could only be used for projects that would benefit the development and image of downtown San Jose. <clears throat> On a number of the <laughs> requests for funds which we receive, there is considerable debate. But on this particular project, the restoration of the trolley cars, there was unanimous agreement that this was something that was very good, not only for downtown San Jose, but for the city as a whole. And we're extremely proud to be taking a part in such a worthwhile project. I'm Mary Vivian Snow, and my father, Theodore Erickson, was one of the original trolley car drivers in San Jose. We moved here from San Francisco just a few months before I was born, and we bought a place, a house on the off the Alameda, just oh, half a dozen blocks from the trolley barn on the Alameda. I'm so pleased to be able to wear this uniform. And when I found the picture of my father in his uniform, and he looked so proud and spiffy and just so wonderful, I thought, I want the exact replica. I had difficulty finding one because the women didn't wear uniforms then, and so I had one designed by tailors in San Jose who did research, and they considered it a wonderful project for them. And uh, this is the original badge. This uniform interests me most of all because it has 16 pockets. And when I brought it home and I tried it on and I saw all those pockets, I called uh, the tailor just the other day to be sure. I said, are you sure they had 16 pockets? He said, absolutely. Not only did they have 16 pockets, but it, they had a place for everything. And then looking back, I remember how he had his pocket watch in one and he had transfers in another and he'd have um, tokens besides the changer. And so a lot of these memories way back I revived and I enjoy being here at the museum on Sundays and showing the trolley cars and telling the people the living history of the trolley cars in the San Jose area. Well, you can see that the trolleys played an important part in the history of our area. Many people are excited about seeing the trolleys making a comeback. 
At the start of our show, we saw how these trolleys will look when restored. I hope you now have a better idea of what it will take to restore our San Jose cars. As we've seen, new paint will be just the finishing touches of a two-year restoration process. Together, classic workmanship and modern technology will bring back to life the San Jose trolleys, a rich legacy from San Jose's past and a colorful part of its future. We'd appreciate your help in getting San Jose's trolleys back on track and add a special touch to downtown San Jose. Speaking of back on track, what do you say? Let's return to Rio Vista for one more ride.